Let's give the Lord that praise, everyone. Let's give the Lord that praise, everyone. Be seated. Whatever my lot that was taught me to say, it is well. It is well. All right, look to your left and right and just tell your neighbor, it's all good with me. It's all good with me. All good in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. All good. Whatever my lot that was taught me to say. Speak it. It is well. It is well. Some of y'all ain't so. Oh, don't rush me. I'm singing. Ain't no rehearsal here. That's why you got to look at your leader. A lot of people don't know these songs no more. And I don't want them to fade away. So Shabbat, while we're church, we're going to resurrect these songs. With my soul. With my soul. Oh, it is well. It is well. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Help me one time. I surrender. Y'all sound beautiful. I know it's for Sunday, but I. Don't just say it, mean it. Ladies, y'all hold us up. Hold that note. Come on. Oh, come on. To thee. Come on. Bless. Come on. Now clap your hands and praise him and let's move forward. Got one more old one for you. And I think everyone should remember this because it's one of the songs you sing as children. You can give me a little beat when you learn it. But it says, Hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. how you keep beat is on the G clef finger note right there. See? That's how I know if you really went to school. Come on, one big choir. 
Don't just sing the words. Let your heart minister to God. I know y'all been getting jiggy with it all morning, but come on. Some of you kids ain't singing, but you should be. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Oh, we left one out. We left one out. We got to go. Come on. Musicians play it one time, play it through. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. Come on, that's when if you can't sing, you can worship. Woo! You that are watching in our virtual sanctuary. May the Lord bless you, heal you, and revive you. Touch you where you've never been touched. I speak unto your sick bodies. Rise. Take up thy bed and walk in Jesus' name.
dig it out. Dig it, dig, dig, dig. Go deeper. Dig, get deeper. Dig, dig, dig. Better get that devil off you. Too much power in here. Loose it. Dig. Don't let the devil's strength be greater than God's power. The devil's bothering you because you're going somewhere. Dig. Dig. Yes, to praise somewhere tap in don't tap out tap in Praise the name of our God, for he is high and lifted up, and his train fills the temple. You may be seated in the presence of our God. It is my job, as you'll see that it is also my responsibility to lead you the best that I know how to the throne of God. Some of you could have gone a little deeper than you did this morning, but you brought them burdens in here and let them ride you. The Bible said, you cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Then grandma said, when life's troubles come your way, hold your head up high and say, I wish I had 50 people to joyously shout hallelujah. And if the storms don't cease, what if you're in, as we are in Florida, this is hurricane season. All the way until the month of November. So what if the storms don't cease? 
just in case the wind keep on blowing. Your soul has to be anchored. Paul says it like this, be steadfast. I can't get no help. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because your labor is not in vain. Tap somebody if they look friendly, tell them no matter what you're going through, your labor is not in vain. Tell them we got another week or so before August slips out on us. And until then, I will bless the Lord. I speak it over this house at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Be seated. Y'all had a lot of time to dance earlier. You didn't take advantage of it. You got to take advantage of your worship moments. No music. We have guests this morning. Shabak, we have guests with us. Play something nice on the piano right now, then we'll get there. Nothing jazzy, just some chords, because we just came out of worship, and we don't want to go back to the club. We won't stay here. We want to stay here. I don't take it for granted when people choose this church to come fellowship, and, they being, and they're being invited by people from other states and cities. These are not guests, most of all, from your invites. These are guests one day will be from people from other states. So I'm going to read it like they were sent to me. This person has been following me virtually for years. They're from Castleberry, Florida. Mission Road Church, Kojic, which I am. Bishop Larry Perkins, which I know. Amber Cornegay. Where are you, Amber? Stan. Can we thank God for Amber? And then Amber was so kind, she's been following me virtually for years, that she brought a guest with her who herself is a guest. <laughs> and the guest she brought is her mother, Mother Phyllis Cornegay. Will you stand, Mother Cornegay? Y'all look like you cannot join in. You've got to be born in. This is the church of God. Now, Shabak, y'all are adopted Kojic, in case you don't know. Your bishop is Church of God in Christ. And my bishop is the presiding prelate of the Church of God in Christ, the Apostle Bishop J. Drew Sheard. Can we clap for him? I believe every leader needs a leader. Anything uncovered will spoil. This person visited us, keep playing from Facebook, Washington, D.C., from a 35-year-old friend of mine whose name is Kimberly Thickpin. She's in D.C. She's been visited. She's visited here once or twice. Her aunt, Nim, used to be a part of my church in Baltimore where I pastored. Lorenzo McKinney, where are you, Lorenzo? Can we thank God for Lorenzo? I hope you've been enjoying the service. Thank you, I, and I hope I don't mess it up for you. But you, may. Washington, D.C. has the most famous church back in my day. I knew the pastor when I uh, did much ministry, so much ministry there for over 20 years, Union Temple Baptist Church is a famous church there. And Lorenzo McKinney is from there, had the nerve to bring a guest from there named Sister Katrina Harrison. Where are you? Can we thank God for Katrina? When I used to speak there, the pastor was Willie Wilson. Is he still the pastor? His daughter? Oh, that's a miracle. Let's clap for that wonderful church there one of the most predominant 
prolific churches of the District of Columbia, for real, is Union Temple Baptist Church. They helped us, and the Sigma's not trying to plug, but they helped us plan the Million Man March, the first one, and they stuck by us, and we had a victorious gathering of African-American men, and I think y'all should clap for that as well. This person was invited by her co-worker, which is Pradesha, is the co-worker, and asked her to come and visit our church. Pradesha is, uh, hold on, let me get this right. So Pradesha is the person that invited her. The person that is the invitee is Andrea, or the invited is Andrea Bryant. Where's Andrea Bryant? Where's Andrea Bryant? Way in the back over there. Y'all don't see her standing near you? Pradesha, is she here? Stand up, baby. We want to clap for you, too. Thank you for inviting. Can y'all clap for Pradesha? Thank you. This person is from Apopka, Florida. They go to First Orlando. They are the guests of our member, Jess Marie. Where are you, Jess, baby? Stand so we can thank God for our own member who's winning souls for the Lord. Joshua Cody Robbins, stand. Can we thank God for Joshua Cody? Y'all clap better. Y'all clap much better. I need people that look, look like him. Because I'm tired of these fake black men looking holy one day and looking like pimps another. I just need somebody that's going to be themselves every day. Be who you are every day. Look at somebody and tell them, don't be a bulletin board on Sunday. Be who you are every day. Javon Ferguson does not wear jeans and stuff like y'all because he's been dressing like that since he was six. His mama and us had him dressed because we dressed like that every day when we were young. We never wore these type of clothes in church ever. See, some of you don't know that. We had church clothes. And we wore church clothes. I don't hear nobody. Every time the church door was open. So don't y'all look at us strange. I'm, I'm just learning this. So we thank God. Uh, this person saw me minister at New Birth. They hail from Haines City, Florida. It's two of them. Harriet and Brandon Constant. Where are you? Can we thank God for both of them in the back? Come on, show them some love. Much love to both of you. Uh, birthdays this week, August the 17th passed. Chef Waldron Kelly had a birthday. Y'all clap for him. August the 20th passed. Sister Tamaya Bundridge, she had... Mia Bundridge had a birthday, August 24th, August 24th, which was just on yesterday, I think. Yeah, Aiden Marcellus, where's baby Aiden? Where's my little boy? He had a birthday, y'all clap for him. On August 27th, which is two days from today, Sister Sh Shawana Vickers will be turning 42 years old, Stan. We want to thank God for Sister Shawana. Some great things are happening, amen. I want to say that I enjoy culture immensely on this morning. Y'all better clap for our young adults. And I want to thank certain people who add their gifts to culture who could say I'm not young, like Brother Keevan Gillard. I want to thank you for y'all are not clapping for his, his deposit. And for Pastor Tamika Robinson, who did a great job with culture. Magnificent ministry this morning. I looked at it. It looked like the entire audience was, was engaged and having fun. 
What I do want y'all to extrapolate from what I'm about to say now without getting offended is I don't ever want to look at our services and see Elder Ferguson have to beg y'all to praise him. Do not pull teeth in this church. We do not do that. Either they praise him or they don't. I don't hear nobody. We do not. We have grown people in here. If they don't get with you, just let them go. But you shouldn't have to be praised. You shouldn't have to be prompted to uh, give God praise and glory when he lets you live another week. And number two, don't beg them to clap better for me. Forget all y'all. Because if y'all don't love leadership, there ain't nothing we can do about that either. If they won't do it for my God, I don't expect them to do it for me. We will grow into this. Amen. We will grow into that. I would like my two certificates, please. I don't want them last. I want them now. I've got two men here that I'm about to. I don't even need Dr. Mixon. I'm doing this myself. I don't need none of y'all. I'm going to be a good pastor. I'm going to do this work myself. Because these are people that I asked and was led by God to. How many love Deacon Kevin Jackson? And I must say this. And when I say words, I don't use words loosely. Everybody that knows me know I'm very direct and will never change that approach. But this man has given his life for this church. See, I wish I could make them clap for you, but I can't. He has opened this church, closed this church, did the carpet of this church, bathrooms of this church. He's been called deacon for years, but he came from another ministry, he and his wife, where they were elders. And he did not mind starting over with me because I don't believe in what you were somewhere else translates here. Because what you were there, you had oil for where you were. When you come here, you must yield yourself and submit to the authority of this church. And we need to see you proven in service. Amen? Well, Kevin has been proven. The word deacon is now erased from his name. Come. I ask that they not dress up. Because some of y'all, why aren't we? This happens during our holy convocation. But what if he does not? I hope he does. But what if he's not able to attend? I want to give him his flowers while he can smell this. Please clap and welcome newly ordained elder Kevin So please, even you that are close to him, that call him Kevin, his name is not Deke. It's not Kevin. You can call him Elder Kevin unless he tells you Kevin is fine. You can call him Elder for short. I want him to rest in his promotion. What's his name? All right. Bye-bye, Elder. Once you submit your licenses like they have, you will get one of ours. Till then, you don't have two driving licenses. Choose where you serve and get the proper license. Is Troy White here? He's working, then I'm going to hold this. Is his wife here? Come here.
Because the two of you are one flesh. I'm sure he's watching. I'm going to honor him by giving this to you to take home, to kiss him and transfer it back to him. And then we will redo this at Holy Convocation. You and your husband, you have been great contributors to this ministry. Even when you went through certain illnesses and attacks, you still attend service. He submits very well. You and your daughter are, are just a blessing to my life. He calls me. He lets me know where he's going before he goes. He asks, can he go? He has a heart for this church. If he has it, you are not just what you eat, you're where you sleep. He wouldn't have a heart for it if you didn't like this church. See, I'm aware of that. See? So I want to thank you for allowing him to bring all of you here to be a member of the greatest church in Central Florida, the Shabbat Church. I would like to give you his license and ordination. He will be called Elder White or Elder Troy. And if you want to be Troy, Troy, or at least Elder. And you are Lady Elder because you are his wife in Jesus' name. Thank you. Show the church turn and show them. Thank you. I'm ecstatic. I don't do no special days. I do it because I'm prophetic. And when the Lord speaks to me, I hear him clearly. I want you all to know that one of our members who is a young man will possibly be featured prophetically as a junior Olympian. This young man, we call him LJ because he's a junior, was born here. They were married here by their former pastor, raised here. They have two children. This boy picked this up naturally. He didn't go to school till after he had the talent. School costs thousands of dollars, has to travel. Family is not rich, but everyone contributes something to this young man's future. I want you to see something he did extemporaneously out of nowhere. He is gifted. I know we will soon be bragging in our new church with hundreds of thousands of people calling out the name LJ. Let's see it. No, no, you got to play that again. What do y'all say about that? And stuck the landing without moving. Yeah, and we've got potential here. Look at somebody and tell them this is the place of passion. Whatever you have a passion for, you need to expect problems to occur every day. And what problems do is they help coach you to become experts. Problems are not always demonic. Problems are issues that need to be solved. Please put our new saying on the screen. My church members will say this along with me. And we will um, do this every Sunday and every Wednesday at whatever point on Wednesday is fine. But right now on Sunday, I want to be able to say it along with you. Because I believe we're entering a place in this ministry where God's about to blow our minds. Do you believe what I just stated? I want us to pause and digress because I'm going to have to rebuild it. But your pastor, Dr. Todd Hall, yours truly, would have never been able to stay off the road as I used to be on the road 50 weeks a year. We have another church meeting. Did y'all enjoy our first church meeting let, thank you thank you thank you I said some stuff that most pastors would never admit and or say but I want to take you further in the relationship with your pastor on the second Sunday of September after morning service 
But I want to tell you all, you all have been good to me with your taruma, whatever you do. But your pastor, and this is why I'm taking my time, would have never been able to stay home and take care of the things I need to, which is tens of thousands of dollars a month, without the help of our E-Church members. The E-Church, I don't hear nobody. I call them I church, but the E church members are a great reason of why I can eat and sleep. People from around the country whose lives I've blessed, they say you've made a difference to us and we're going to sow into you because we know it's not easy for you to stay home as an itinerary preacher and still be able to live the life you were living. Some of you don't like giving because you want to dress and drive better than me. If it was a competition, I'd break you, right? But I'm being nice. So folk with money don't like giving people money because they want to be the best in what they do. I got wealthy because I lived beneath my privilege for over 35 years. I did not try to compete with anyone. I did not get a wonderful home until three years ago. I did not drive a Bentley until a few years ago, and I don't like any of it. See, that's where you get lost. I purchased it so that my members can see what faith could do. Not for you to try to get jealous and not do what God asked you to do. Just remember, you don't pay a car note, an insurance, a health note. You don't pay anything of mine. Look at folk. Is he serious? He preached like that, and this church don't pick up none of his bills. Nothing. Not even a magic ticket for the Orlando game. All right, I'm not asked anyone, but I've seen a lot of you flexing and looking fly, but your offerings look way low. You got to learn that to whom much is given. Amen. I chip in for carpets. I chip in for insurance. I start $40,000 on the roof. I don't hear nobody. I do everything because I don't want to be a pastor that anyone can look at and say he's ripping off the church. I'm not ripping off anybody. I came here this way. Look at somebody and tell them. And that's a fact. So I love the E-Church. And even though I can't see them at times, they fly in. About seven families said that they're moving here in January. I said, what? They said, we moving. And y'all ain't happy about that? I am. They're moving here. And I'm excited to have those who watch from afar want to come because they can no longer just eat by way of the internet. Please put up our new uh, saying. This is going to be our proclamation until it's fully understood, until we can repeat it verbatim, and until we see the results of what we're about to confess. Can everyone stand with me on this confession? This is my confession to you and your confession to me. And may we keep covenant. Amen. Amen. Let's read it two times. Let's go. Remember the relationship between a pastor and the congregation is a partnership. With mutual respect and support being the essential for the health of the church. Let's read it again. Remember, the relationship between a pastor and the congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being essential for the health. Now I'll hug somebody, tell them I love you, and let's respect who we hug and, begin, and let's prepare for the word of God. For all of you that are watching, please share, tag, and invite as we go into the word of the Lord. You can see on my t-shirt that was purchased 
by a lovely member who doesn't like me telling it, but I have to stand up, Sister Jackson. Thank you for y'all clapping for my T-shirt. I didn't ask for it. She heard me on Wednesday say, I'll be teaching the topic, Can You Dig It? And she went and created this shirt. Now, I need to know, Rena, stand up. How you get one? Turn around, show them my shirt. <laughs> Y'all clap for Rennes too, will you? Man, I just can't get nothing for myself. No, 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 I'm, I'm grateful. And uh, this is a part of what I'm going to preach on this morning with one minute left to morning. When I first stood up, I started singing old songs. What I actually did for three folk who would push me was I went digging. You didn't catch it, but I was exercising what I was going to preach. And I had to go get some old songs and take the dirt off of those songs and let them live again. There are some things you should bury. And there are some things you should dig up. Will you tell someone there are some things you should bury? And tell that person, once it's dead, let it stay dead, will you? And then there are some things you need to dig back up. You still have feelings for it. You still miss it. You buried it alive. That's why I say don't ever stop being friends over your first argument. Don't walk away from the marriage because he cheated one time. Oh, I got real deep on that, huh? I got some claps on the first argument for a friend. No applause at all on the cheating, but you want to get married for better or for worse. If you're not prepared for the worst and for sickness and disease, you should not get married. Somebody needs someone who's going to be there through thick and thin, up and down. You young people, don't y'all get married. You know, women, young, you know, young women who don't want to work should be cheated on. See, that was a heavy statement. No, I said it because I saw some young women look at me on the cheating and I'm like, you ain't even married. And you've got an opinion? You don't even have a boyfriend. You've had a few, you couldn't keep them, but you buried them alive. Because they didn't meet your standards while you have nothing yourself to stand on. How does this work? And you older women should be saying amen because you got to teach younger women how to do this properly. And you older men should be talking because we must teach these young guys get a job. Take the rims off your car and get an apartment. Move out your mama's house and buy some... Y'all didn't like that either, huh? But then these women are turned on by the men with the chrome and the rims and the jewelry and they ain't got no place to live. That relationship is going to be buried alive. Anything with no reason to live must die. You never give one of your good kidneys out of the two to a person that's going to keep eating sweet potato pie. Look at that, that they're going to use your good kidney to keep eating the way they were eating when you can just eat bad and keep one kidney working and one... Listen, I'm not going to give you a part of me if you're not going to better who you are. 
Oh, we ain't shouting no more, right? You're either a blessing or a bum. That's the way this goes. That's male and female. We got some female bums too. Look at them looking for help. Is he talking to us? Yes. Both parties must have something to bring to the table besides sex. Sex don't pay bills, but it'll cost you some money. I promise you now. You... And because we won't talk about things like this, we have a church full of people covering their pain and their depression. Then they claim, I don't go to church. You don't go to church because you're trying to avoid a conversation that you need to have. Turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 26, verses 6 through 12. And then stay with me in the book of Genesis, Elder Curry. We're going to go to chapter 12. And read verses 10 through 20. Then I'm going to try to do this in a CME kind of way. But all I ask for in advance, because I can't hear my church online. They always write in comments, thousands of comments, which I can hear them. But if I can just hear five of yours, I'd be okay. Genesis 26, verses 6 through 12. And Isaac dwelt in Gerah. The men of that place asked him about his wife. He said, she is my sister. He said that because he feared, for he feared to say, she is my wife. Lest he, the men of that place, should kill me for Rebecca because she was fair to look upon. Look at my tell she had to be fine. I've seen folk kill folk over unattractive people. Can't say ugly, beauty's in the eyes of the beholder. And I've seen some people with husbands wonder how they got them and wives. And I see some of you fine and wonder why you ain't got one. So it's a real, you know, it's a quandary. Must be a bigger secret to marriage. Verse 8. Came to pass when he had been there for a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out of a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting, y'all don't hear me, with Rebekah, his wife. See, y'all don't know how to read the Bible because that word sporting has a lot of connotation. And it probably made King Abimelech, for one person would jump, wonder. I thought he said that was his sister. Whatever he was doing, it didn't look like a brother and sister event. That's what y'all do to your kids when you let them stay over. It'd be like my uncle staying over with my mama. Everybody can't be a relative. Y'all gonna confuse these kids. Just go and tell them the truth. Mama got a problem. <laughs> Verse 9, the Bible called Isaac and said, Behold of a surety, she is your wife. And how did you dare tell me she's your sister? Isaac said unto him, Because I said it, lest I die for her. Abimelech then also said, what is this that thou hast done? One of the people might lightly have leaned with thy wife and thou should have brought guilt, guiltiness upon us. Abimelech charged all of his people saying, he that toucheth this man or his wife, y'all shall be put to death. Look at your neighbor and tell him, don't touch me here. Tell him at least in the wrong way. Don't touch me in the wrong way. 
Isaac, we'll be preaching this later, sold in that land and received, y'all don't hear me, in the same year, a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Tell him this month, I promise you, this month. Some of you are so close that the devil got on your nerve to reset you and you fell for his okie doke. I told you all, stay focused. It's getting harder right now because you're getting closer. You don't get tired on the last lap. lap. You find a second win. Oh, I appreciate all of the communication. What I want you to remember from Genesis 26 is simply this. Then I'll fix the whole sermon. It's out of the blessing he got in verse 12. And tell somebody that was a huge blessing. Tell him it was a hundredfold. But look at somebody and tell him he got all of that after lying. Yeah, and I, and I need y'all. I need y'all to remember this. That some of you owe God praise because he ain't blessing you according to your weakness. These first three roles acting real superficial, huh? If God was divvying out houses and jobs and businesses according to the lives we live, some of us will be in a one bedroom. Let me talk. Over the years of my life being saved, if God added all of that up and said, let me bless him according to his final grade, I wouldn't be homeless. But I sure wouldn't be living in the place of Florida that I'm living. I'd be somewhere in Pine Hills. Ain't nothing wrong with in case you live there. But I'd be somewhere in Carver Shores. I'd be living right off of OBT around the corner from Popeye's. And some of you would be my neighbor living right underneath me. We all be like, hey. I just need you to catch it. The quicker you catch it, the quicker I can preach it with passion. And that is, he gets all of this after lying. Look at somebody, help me talk to them for the rest of the sermon and tell them, you don't have to lie to get it. I'm still stuck on the marriage thing for two minutes. Want to help you. Does not Pastor Jay's hair look so much better? Stand up, Pastor Jay. I ain't lying. Thank you for taking them braids out your hair. Thank you so very much. Be your age. Thank you so very much. And whoever told you they were pretty, slap them. Thank you so very much. I didn't ask them to change it. God hears prayer. Why would you read this and then say to God who you love, who you want to bless you, I'm going to see if one person scream, if he can do it, so can I. Why do y'all use pitiful examples? Why y'all not talking to lean on pitiful excuses? Because someone else got away with something. Help me, young adults, don't mean you should want to repeat the same scenario. I wanted to know where did he get this lion from? Have you ever seen people do things and if you are inquisitive, give me two people, you said... Who raised them like this? I see men, even two in here, who said I'm raising my son to be respectful and they ain't respectful. I get real confused. How you trying to get out of somebody what ain't in you? 
My son cussed me out and I knocked him out. Sure, because you cuss everybody else out. If you want to be a real father, a real mentor, a real mother, a real somebody, be what you want folk to become. Lead by example. Some of you ain't talking to me. And if you don't, I'm going to start without calling your name. Call out every weakness you have. Until you decide not to come to Sunday church for a long time. Because some of you this morning are sitting in here like a bulletin board. We want to see the real you. You're a liar, a cheater, a raker, Where did he get this lion from? And let me pause and we'll give her credit later, but we are glad to have Bishop-elect Latanya Haywood of the Bar Tabernacle, Bronx, New York, with us on today. And her sons, I don't hear nobody, my boys. From the boogie down, where did he get this teaching from? For that reason, in order for you to know how people are, what they are, you may have to go backwards. So I'm taking you to chapter 12. It's a different person, but let's see if anything is similar. Can I preach this? Verse 12. There was a, there, verse 10, I'm sorry. There was a famine in the land, and Abram, who is Isaac's daddy, went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. He needed to go somewhere until where he was changed. Touch somebody mind, tell him some changes are about to take place. Verse 11, can't get my church. It came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said to Sariah, his wife, behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman or you're fine to look upon. Therefore, it shall come to pass that when we go to Egypt, these Egyptians shall put an eye on you, look at you. You'll become a piece of eye candy. They shall say, this is his wife and they will kill me, but they will save you alive. Say, I pray thee when they ask you, tell them I'm your sister. Now, if I say this and 20 of you don't jump, then I missed it. And the 20 that don't jump, if you're my members, don't come back. And that's this. You got to stop lying on people to save yourself. My goddaughter says, say it again, and I'm going to. She's from three generations of preachers with an itinerant global godfather as the prophet, not a. You must stop lying on other people just to save yourself. When you do that for three people, you are burying someone alive. This middle is getting on my nerve, but I'm going to move on. When you do things like that, you are burying a person alive. I'm sorry. I need to, and I don't speak in tongues much in public unless it hits me. But I want to say this to 40 people who will talk to me from your heart. When somebody really loves you and studies you, they already know you. So why not just be who you really are from the beginning? Years later, you confess. They be like, I already knew that. Please, that's oh, They know you. Both of these men want their wives to lie to save themselves. I want to, I didn't want to do this as a man, but as a pastor, 
the Lord made me write this. So sisters, I would like to give y'all some credit. And this is what I want to say to the women who will clap and the men who will clap because it's true. Even though as a man, I didn't want to admit this. Most of us men could have lost our lives and everything if these women didn't cover us the way that they do. And you sloppy clapping men, your day coming. It ain't over. Something from your hole can come up out of there any day now. And the only fight you will have is that's the past. That's the past. That's the past. That's the. But what's in the past is your present. Some of you men, without saying amen, know the reason why your wife's not pleased with you. With, and you know why your girlfriend might be online. And you know why you're on the phone all the time and don't want to talk to them. Let's just be very frank and let me dig a hole. Can I do this? There are two or three of you men in here that have wives and women who are gay. That's a fact. You don't know you look gay. You don't know you dress gay. You don't know you're too emotional to be a man. The signs for real men, we see you. You're gay. Period. See how quiet it got? Real men would have been like, hey, amen. But other men are like, oh, shoot. And with a fine wife like you have or girlfriend, you're burying your relationship alive. She could be better to you if you confess the truth. I'm tired of seeing liars with a mic. I need to see somebody with a shovel. All right, I'm almost there. Can you dig it? I'm almost there now. When you say you dig me, I need you to dig up some stuff about yourself and tell me before we get all involved because the hole you're digging is either for my funeral or my future. Look at somebody and ask them, what is the hole you're digging for? Back in my day, the 60s and 70s, when people liked a woman, they said, I'm digging you. See, y'all ain't old enough. I dig you. Jesus. Then y'all change it with, I'm feeling you. Don't feel until you dig. Touch somebody and tell them, don't feel until you dig. Some of you have effeminate tendencies, and if you want to get rid of them, you've got to confess it to someone that can help you through that procedure. All right, y'all don't want to talk, but Mother Lockett, y'all can pray for me now because I'm going to get a little raunchy because y'all acting too different. I personally don't care if you're gay or anything because the more gay you are, the more women there are for me. See, I personally... Don't care if you lose your wife. If I like her, I can find her. See, I personally don't care what you do. But as your pastor, as a man of God, the Bible does not allow those rules to be activated. See, your lie is, gonna re is soon going to be replaced by someone truthful. And when they leave you, they're going to leave you saying, I love you. I love the you that you projected to be. But I like and love the him that I know he is. I'd rather be with someone that will be honest. I can't hear you talk. Than someone who's a professional liar. I got some professional liars even in my family. I got one as a child. I got a real professional now, I'm telling you. Where was I? Because I'm about to holler because y'all didn't like this. Young people like when we preach like this. They be like, tell them. Tell them just all in our business. Bishop, they be lying. So you grown-ups better talk back to me. Don't let them believe all of us are lies. I got beat too many times for lying. I stole from the store some potato chips and some bon bontons. 
from the bodega in Brownsville, Brooklyn. All I got from Mother Brown was, boy, give me them things, and she slapped me on the hand. But when you lie, it looks like this. It don't anymore, but this is how it used to look, and I'm going to see who scream. Look at me. Oh, yeah. And you better look, look me in the eye. Some of you so good, you lie with a straight face. You're a liar and a cheat. Let's read the whole story. Verse 13, say, I pray thee, Dr. Davis, thou art my sister, that it might be well with me for thy sake. My soul shall live, and he confessed, because of thee. Y'all not reading this Bible? It came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman and said, she fine, she very fair. The princess also, Pharaoh saw her and commanded her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. The princess also, Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh and said, bring that gal to my house. Back then, all of this is legal. See, I don't hear nobody. Why would they do that? All of this is legal. Let me move forward. Can I get some men to help me preach today? And he entreated Abram well for her sake. And uh, he had sheep, he had oxen, he had asses, he had men servants, he had maid servants, he had she asses, he had camel. He had a great portfolio. And he didn't want to lose all of that because of his wife. The only way he could keep all of this, he supposed, was to lie. All right, I got to get raunchy again for the last time. Because we in South Popka and we keep it real in here. Now, I don't want the guests to think anything else. Hold on to your seats. Here goes for tenfold who will jump. It is a mere fact. That if you're married and like a woman, every woman don't want a single man. There is somebody who wants a married man. So you don't have to slip your ring off and hide it in your pocket. There are some women that don't want you as a real husband. They want you as a sugar daddy. Look at the men that ain't clapping. You still got a tan around that. <laughs> Real women who cheat know all the signs. They be like, he married. He got a baby seat in the back. Of the <laughs> he married. He speaks good English. He's married. He even said, have a good evening. He married. Good evening. He didn't say, excuse me. He said, excuse me. Now that man married. He shook my hand, opened my door. That man probably married. Because the other men cheating that ain't married be like the door's open. Look at y'all. All the women get quiet now. All the women get quiet now. He be like, do you have your part of the bill? <laughs> real men treat, not real married men. Do you have your part of the bill? Especially if his wife got access to his credit card. She be like, where you been? What you eat for $325? Look at the cheating man, man. Pop giving away all the secrets, man. Calm down. I'm helping save your life. The man was going to continue to lie all the way through 17. I'm almost there, Dr. Sharon. Verse 17 said, the law plagued Pharaoh and his house because right now, Sarah is living in Pharaoh's house. 
He has not touched her. He's commanded her to come and he's preparing to make his move. And the night before he makes the move, God visits him. Oh, y'all don't like the story. Why is he preaching this? Because it's written. And what's written is reality. Don't y'all act like you ain't never been hurt and then somebody find out that they really love you and try to dig you back up and be like, I'm sorry, are you still available? Negro, you buried me alive. Look at your name and say, can you dig it? Come on, stay with me. You knocked the wind out of me. You didn't check for a pulse. You took for granted because I'm no longer responding. Put me in a case and nailed it shut. Dug a hole six to eight feet deep. But you didn't know how long I could hold my breath. Let me get back. I want to I talk about verse 18. When you know you're a treasure and not trash, you're meant to be buried. And when somebody understands value, they'll come with a shovel. Now, let me come back. They'll come and scoop you up. Somebody say scoop. Am I preaching okay, Rob? Don, the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues, look why he did it. Because of Sarah, Sariah, Abram's wife. He's doing all of this, y'all ain't gonna scream, to save their marriage. All of this to stop her from being pimped to save other people's lives. She's about to take it laying down so that someone can stand up. All right, y'all don't want me to preach this. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm tired of taking all this laying down. Somebody has to stand for what they believe. Look at your neighbor again and ask him, can you dig that? Pharaoh called Abram and said, what is it that thou hast done unto me? Because God in verse 17 plagued them. So in 18, Pharaoh called for Abram, and I wish other folk would talk, and said, what is this that you have done to me? Why didn't you just tell me she was your wife? That's because he had a premeditated notion that the man was going to kill him. See, some of y'all think things are going to go wrong when you tell the truth. But if anybody doesn't like the truth, you already chose wrong. Y'all ain't talking. If you can't take my truth, all right, I, thank you, thank you, mother. You can't take what I'm about to tell you, then we shouldn't be together. Now, most folk who are professional liars who don't want to hurt folk, they always use this way out for three screaming women and two men. You never asked. Then some of you are so hardcore with knowing that what you hid could now kill somebody, that you made a decision to say, this one's going with me to my grave. Now you think you buried it, but it's going to bury you. It ain't going to come up till the devil sees that you're successful enough for him to go dig in. That's the way this works. There was a lie in the truth, and they decided to hang out. Truth is a person. I'm, I'm going to be preaching in about 15 minutes. Truth is an actual person. Lie is an actual person. Neither one of these are believed until a person begins to tell one of them. So truth and the lie is hanging out. The lie said to the truth, I have been delivered. The truth said for real. 
He said, I don't want to lie no more. So for me to tell the truth, I need to hang with you. Young people talk to me. They go to hanging out and they get to a place where they have to go to the other side of the uh, uh, river. And there's a boat over there. And truth says to a lie, can you swim? Lie say, I cannot swim. He said, tell me the truth. He said, yeah, I'm hanging with you. Then the lie said the truth, can you swim? And he said, yes, I can swim. He said, well, being that you can swim, you need to swim over there, get the boat, bring it back, and we both cross over. So the truth took off his clothes. Dove in the water, drove over there while the truth is swimming to get the boat. The lie put on truth's clothes. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh-huh. Y'all on a little red bus. Don't act like who want what's yours ain't trying to look like you. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it. No, no. Stop wasting money on being me. You can save a lot of money being yourself. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery, but the truth is all over there, and the lie has on truth clothes, and Bishop Robinson, the lie dressed like the truth, decides to go back to where the truth in him met. So the lie goes back everywhere truth had influence and tries to infect his influence. Goes to everybody in that city, knocks on the doors, everybody lets him in. He said, I only need one more woman and if I can get her to believe me, I can distort the world forever. Knocked on the door, old woman about 90 said, who is it? Said, the truth. Hey there. Open the door and let me in like you always do. No. He said, what's wrong? She said, keep talking, because right now you don't sound like the truth. You want to know who a liar is? Let him keep talking. Them stories don't never turn out. Was it August? Was it November? Was it Virginia? Was it New York? Are you 50 or 15? I mean... He kept talking. He adjusted his vocal tone. She said, all right, I believe you. She looked through the people. She said, stand in front of the door. I need to see you. Yeah, you look a little like the truth. He kept talking. Kept talking. She cracks the door. He's almost in. And if he can do this, he can disturb all of the world. He said, when the last time we talked, he had that information. Because the truth is not believed. I mean, a lie is not believable without some truth in it. That's how some of y'all started hating each other. She told me y'all went to eat at so-and-so place. And because that's right, don't mean the rest of it is right. Oh, I wish I had. I saw your man in a car with a woman. He could have been dropping somebody. And you, see, I can't get my church to talk to me. I saw two men hugging. That don't mean they gay. Leave them men alone. Some of you ain't clapping. You know why? You don't want to open up to the truth. But hold on. Hold on. She cracks the door a little wider, but she has, y'all remember them hood latches? She got that latch on. She got a good view of you. Yeah, now you stand like the truth. You talk like the truth. You sound like the truth. Everything you said was the truth. Said, I'm about to let you in. She opens, moves the lock. Looks out. He don't have power till he gets in. The biggest thing she did right, and I'm going to hope you catch it, is she looked at him, Uh put her head out the door. Here comes a person wet, walking down. Uh And she looked at them and looked at him. And she said, and I'm going to see you catch. You almost got me. You a well-dressed lie. But here come the naked truth. 
Folk that ain't clapping right now, it's because you a well-dressed lot. And the only thing that can expose you is the naked truth. Good to see you, bro. Look at someone and tell them, be one or the other. Choose. If you're going to lie, be well-dressed. Don't go to hell broke. Go to hell as rich as you can. Some of you who claim you dislike us would really love us if you heard our story. You too busy hearing a story that was fabricated about me. I was at when the best story is the one that you allow me to tell you. I know I'm nasty, but I'm nasty for a reason. I know I'm mean, but I'm mean for a reason. I know I'm hard on men, but I'm hard on men for a reason. I know y'all don't want me to keep preaching now. Some of y'all have some bad tendencies, but you have them for a reason. What I don't want you to do, then I'll get ready to church you in about eight minutes. Ten of you catch. I don't want you to use your reason and make it a season. Negro, how long you going to lie? How many times I got to forgive you? How many times? Can we like have some rules? How many times? Because in baseball, three strikes, you're out. Five fouls, you're out the game. In every sport, there's some rules. What's the rules of our relationship? I thought the devil was mad because my screen went off. I saw it say, I can't preach no more. That's it. The truth is, anyone with a proclivity, anyone with a weakness and addiction that has flaws in their personalities, be it it's medical or be it it's mental or be it it's something you just like doing because it gets attention. If you have ever lied like I have, see, some of you won't admit that, but I've lied. Now, I ain't no liar, because once I lie, 24 hours, I got to call people back and be like, listen. I, I sit, God put something in me. I just can't sleep. I'd be like, man, you a liar. And if it hurts them, I say better now than never, cause it, because it's killing me. It's hurting you. See, but to hold a lie kills the person. I'd rather hurt you because you'll heal on truth. But if I let the lie make you believe one thing, I'm killing me and you. I see everybody rethinking. My prophetic on now, they like, Jesus Christ. I never knew there was so much to lying. What was I saying? Thank, thank you. All of us have proclivities and insecurities and addictions and flaws and whatever. But when you are a pureness, a purist, when you are a purist, P-U-R-I-S-T, when you are a purist, for about 30 of you who made mistakes like I have and you jump, you'll be blessed by the end of August. That's this. You want to do better. You are not satisfied with the version of you. Every day that thing comes to you, you be like, Jesus. For every day you hold it, there's a pile of dirt, right? I cannot lie again. I'm a prophet. We got three or four, five, six, probably way more, the Lord said, in here that have powerful positions in ministry and church on their jobs that lied to get there. They lied. That means everything they're saying God gave them may not be so. And the reason why you can't get what they have is you're too truthful. But I'm going to say this to screamers. When you tell the truth, it may not come when you want it. I'm almost, I'm almost there. If I tell you I'm going to preach, I'm going to preach. It never comes when we expect it because lying speeds up the process.
I got to tell a very difficult truth. Not of mine. But there was a person who I was counseling for marriage and her husband just, or her husband to be just went south. And I said to her, I said, listen, you love him? Yes. You in love with him? Yes. I said to him in another session, do you love her? Yes. Are you in love with her? Yes. But she lies. I said, okay, we got a few of those. He was like, no, nah, I just can't take it. I said, you ever lied before? Yes, but not to someone I love. I said, they go second lie. Now let me... Because people normally lie to who loves them because they know who loves them won't leave. So that's not true. See, I can't get no help again. I ain't never lied to nobody I love. Come on, you're kidding. Sister Curry, don't ask him no questions now. You, you. CJ, you ever lie to your parents? Don't answer, but just answer in your head. You, 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 it's just difficult. But y'all must grasp that the reason why your season has not began yet is you've been very honest with you. You are trying to locate what you did wrong. When you just found out in the scripture, God really don't care what you did wrong. Oh, yeah. He's trying to let you know when you get yours, you ain't got to duck. You ain't got to look behind. You ain't got to worry about something being brought up. Look, somebody tell me, that's how I want it. That's how I want it. If I get somebody bold enough, also screaming, that's how I'm going to get it. Now you said it, but it takes a little while. Remember, the lion had to pull off his clothes. That take time. Jumped in the water, swim across. That took time. Had to get the boat rolled all the way back. That took time. Had to come back and find a lie. When you are a good-hearted person, you are always not connecting what's going wrong with you to witchcraft. You're trying to find out which sin did you do. And now I'm going to free 50 screamers. God said, this ain't got nothing to do with your sins whatsoever. God says, I'm going to bless you because you're honest. You're coherent. There are people who love a certain car and bought it as is. What makes you think they won't take you as is? And when you buy something, y'all don't hear me, as is, most of the time it's because you can't afford something brand new. But if you buy it as is, it might last you the rest of your life. The only thing you have to be concerned about for those who will scream is there's no warranty. And I don't care who you trust. Ain't no guarantee that you ain't going to get hurt by that person that you put all your trust in. Life does not come with guarantees. Now, some of y'all that's screaming at me because you have a high level of lying ability. Let me tell you who you are. Let me describe you because you ain't fooling, making nobody accept you as a mess that you are. And that's this. You ain't nothing but a shiny car with nothing under the hood. You have nothing. Your whole life is created by fabrication. How can you sleep? How can you get married? How could you make children when everything you have exists on an unstable foundation called lying? You ain't never been to college. You ain't never had a degree. You ain't never been married before. Your mama is not dead. Stop making me feel sorry for you giving you the love that I should give to somebody else because you have found out how pure of a person I am.
Some of you brothers that ain't talking need to go home today and confess to your wives the truth. Let's see how long that lasts. Go tell them the truth. You've been telling her you ain't never cheated since you've been married. You done told me too, but I found out different. Tell her that you kissed the girl the other night. Go tell her. Tell her you felt the girl's body. Go tell her if I heard it. I know she know it. But you stood at the altar. Confessed your undying love. Unwavering truth. Use your past as a credit card. It didn't work last time, but this time, I promised God that it would work. Liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Let me break this monotony. Uh, what Isaac offered that Abram couldn't offer and we're going to do it we will not make the mistakes of our fathers but for three folk now who want to get spiritual and talk to me we must go back and redig that well we must get the dirt out of the generation y'all oh yeah we need folk whose sermons make sense enough that people want to live As an example, thank you, Elder Jackson, number one. This is what I'm going to do right now. And this is for ten folk who will jump. You want God to bless you, all you got to do is stand before God and say, I am a liar, I am gay, I am this. But if you need somebody, all God wants is your honesty. I can't get no help upstairs either. When Isaiah, the prophet, when I feel the Holy Ghost, Isaiah the prophet was at his uncle, y'all didn't know that funeral, Isaiah. That's his uncle. And in the year that King Isaiah died, Isaiah 6, I also saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. Then God introduced himself to Isaiah. When he finished, Isaiah then says the most famous quote that we quote without knowledge, Lord, if you need somebody, here am I, send me. And God got ready to send him. God did not bring up anything. Isaiah, when he gets employed by God, says, before I go, there's something I need to confess. God said go ahead he said I cuss I'm a man of a filthy mouth God said I knew that when I called you y'all ain't talking you can't say nothing that will shock God except lying he's like why God said I'll judge fornicators I'll judge whoremongers. I'll judge adulterers. You ain't been screaming at me today. I'll judge thieves. He said, but a liar will not tarry. God can't stand. You know why? Because he says, I'm the way, the truth. So anything that's the opposite of the truth is the opposite of God. And God refuses to let light have fellowship. And what is faith? Is a person that can walk through lies. What is faith? A person that can make it without you. What is faith? And he walks with me when you won't. And he talks to me when you won't. And he tells me when you decide not to. That I am. 
If you know God's hand is on you through all the mistakes you made, but you've been very honest with yourself and you really love him and you don't want him to leave you and you ain't going to leave him, look at your neighbor very securely and passionately and tell him I'm the truth. You hear me? See, you are the truth. If you are a person who represents God well, you are nothing but the naked. I'm the truth. about to bring this down they redig the wells I'm about to call of their fathers they go back to the place where their fathers put in work and they make sure that work is done properly the reason why 30 of you who will run jump or clap for real and don't care who laughs the reason why you've been going through hell for years and I didn't know it till about three weeks ago is because God told the devil, I've got another person from the same last family you destroy. I want you to put them in the same situation. I want... I, I'm going to give them diabetes and they're going to think it's generational. I'm going to let their marriage not work. They're going to think it's witchcraft. But if they stand their ground and take responsibility, I am going to dig the hole, not for their funeral. When you have nothing else to stand on, stand on Christ. Look at the other jealous folk. Why they be running and clapping? Because they almost there. The question should be why you don't. That should be the question is why you in a minor group with major problems. And we in the majority with minor problems. If you're in a casket and you've been buried and you wake up and you find out you underground, you don't stay quiet and wait for help. You screaming, hoping somebody in the cemetery. Help! 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 I'm not crazy. I'm courageous. And I'm trying to live. Let everything that have breath. Isaac, ha, ta, ta, ta. Isaac goes back. Must be preaching. Rob stood past 30 seconds. But Isaac goes back and he digs the same place his father, and for three folk who scream, he got out of it what his father did. When they put dirt, they clogged it, they made it back up. But when he dug it, he dug until something refreshing. I want you to tag two people on the shoulder and tell them I feel the freshness coming to your life. Tell them I don't care how bad life has been for the past few years. God is about to decongest. God is about to unclog. God is about to make things move again. Let me speak and nobody get mad. They were being nice to you for 40 minutes of my teaching, not standing in the front. Now they here, they ain't moving. You either stand up and look over them or you just listen or watch the screen. But we ain't stopping our praise for you to get a look, right? We can't do that. We'll do it for a little while. But real church, the woman with the issue of blood had to crawl under legs. We don't have time. We're trying to get a miracle. You just trying to wake up tomorrow. We're trying to get jobs and promotions and been, I can't do that. And that's why we bought these lovely screens. Come on, sir. 
If they block your pastor's view, you, you are his adjutant, right? If they stand in front of him early, you can say, can you slide over? If later on they're excited and stand there, you better not tell my members move. He better move where he can see. Ain't nobody's position give them no power like that. Not in here. Maybe in our new church, it'd be no problem. We have rising chairs where everybody could see. But right now, we're the best storefront you ever seen in your life. Dr. Mixon, he goes back. I got to close. And he gets something out of it that his father didn't get out of. Being that y'all have a prophetic pastor, let me say this to 30 of you who are prophetic and not pathetic, who will give God crazy praise on this if you need a miracle. The Lord says, tell you, because you waited so long, once it starts flowing, it'll never stop. I thought I told you that we won't stop. I thought I I have ministered many places around the world. Countless of places to countless of thousands. Tens of thousands. I probably have peaked a million souls that I've affected or more. And at times when I traveled and stayed at hotels, I would have to hear these words. I'm about to dance in a minute. I would have to hear these words. It's full. Regardless of who I was, regardless of how far I traveled, I had to accept words, it's full. It's full translates no more vacancy. No more vacancy says we don't care about your money, every room is full. Y'all don't want me to preach this. Got to the elevator, checked in. Elevator has a rule, maximum weight 2,500 pounds. I wish I had somebody talking to me. And once 10 folk got in there that weighed 200 and something pounds, you always get that fool who say, can you fit one more? If they knew that elevator was going to fall from the top floor because of one more, they'd have stayed on the ground. God said, tell some of you, I made sure there was no room for you because at that time it was dangerous. You would... I made sure they didn't like you. You don't fit. I made sure there was no occupancy. And that's God. Shake somebody's hand. Give them your secret shake. A high five. Give them a us. Give them something. And let them know it's all good now. I could have fit in the elevator. But I played the scenario. What if? Because I decided I wanted to go up with everyone else. When I could have just stayed on the ground. I was at the Marriott Marquis. One of the prettiest things back in the day. Elevator full. I'm staying on the 20 something floor. I got a suite. Can't wait to get there. Both elevators full. I'm upset. Luggage. The man got a private way to go up. The service man takes the valet bags. He's got a, a service elevator that I can't get on. Oh. But I waited and I waited. And finally, after about 12 minutes or more of long waiting, an elevator opened and there was only one person on there. And he said, this is yours all to yourself. I got ready to go up. He said, do you mind if I ride up with you? I said, sure. He said, I'm riding up with you because I want to know, is your name 
Todd Hall? I said, yes. Why? I didn't want to say yes. He said, I looked and I said, wow, he being real patient down there. I wonder. He said, I saw you a little antsy. He said, but I want to ride up with you. He said, what room you at? I didn't want to tell him. I said, I'm going to 2106. I'm not there no more. So, but, but I'm going up to 2106. He comes there. He gets the key. He said, oh, this is where the bellman just brought your luggage. He said, hey, man, I'm going to do you a favor. He said, I watch you on YouTube so much, I'm going to pay for your whole stay. You just going. And the Lord said, tell you, this next season, you ain't got to pay for it. All you got to do is wait. All some of you had to do and you did it this month was wait a little longer. All you had to do in kingdom prophetic words who will scream is catch the next one. Accept rejection. Accept folk telling you ain't no room. Accept all of that ass. I'll catch the next one. Yell it. Lord, I see visitors in the back standing. I must be saying something. If you get on the elevator back in the 70s and the 80s of a wonderful hotel, a five-star or whatever, you would hear these words if a man is manning that elevator. If I say these two words, you got 10 seconds to praise them in your own personality, God's going to bless you. You would hear when it comes down to your level, going up, Y'all ain't you. You would actually. Six years ago, and I remember because I put it in the notes, I went to Walgreens looking for a 70-inch television. I'm sorry, Walmart. Thank you, church. They said Walgreens. Walmart. <laughs> I went to Walmart looking for a 70-inch TV. And all of them were on sale. What was ridiculous is I thought one would be there. I thought no one would beat me to the store. I thought I was the only one that heard the announcement. I waited till I finished resting. I went when I finished sleeping. I went when everybody was at work. But when I got there, I heard, we don't have no more. Oh, I wish I was... They, they, I said, come on, it just went on sale yesterday. He said, no, it actually went on sale last night. He said, and they were sold last night. I said, what? He said, there were folk waiting yesterday for the word to come to pass by that night. Oh, okay, everybody missed it. I'm putting your future on sale today. And for some of you, you should be able to pick it up. When? See, you can't even say it with passion. God could be touching somebody's heart right now to write you a check to pay off your car and you in here looking all silly saving a praise until it happens. Let me hear that A. All right, all right, all right, all right. I went there looking for that 70 inch TV. And when I got there, they were sold out. And I was a prophet still of over 35 years then. I heard the voice of God. He's never gone with me shopping, but I heard the voice of God. The voice of God told me, I'm going to see who hears me. Don't move. I know you heard what he said, but don't move. 
I went through several cycles of you still here? What you still here for? And I answered some of them. I said, I don't even know why I'm here. Because I'm not going to settle for a 52 inch. I'm not going to settle for a 40 inch. I'm getting just what I came here for. And the enemy's voice said, I told you, we don't have any more. Lord said, don't move. Look at somebody, tell three people you want blessed by the end of the month. Don't move, you hear me? Tell them, I don't care what you heard, what it sounds like, all the negativity. Tell them, don't move. I wish I had some folk that would have old church scream across the room and say, don't move. Don't move. Yeah. Lord. I didn't move. I look like a fool. Another manager came in, must have heard from the other previous manager, and came to me and said, sir, why are you just standing here? I said, am I intimidating anybody? No, but your stance is concerning. Y'all just missed that. Sir, sit down, go have a soda, McDonald's, but you just stand and haven't done all the stand. Sir, you just standing. Let me prophesy while I feel it. You that are standing, you're about to get served. You that are sitting, you're going to get blessed too. But I'm just directing who the Lord told me to direct. Just grab somebody and tell them everything's going to be all right. Now put some swag on it. Don't say it like, tell them everything is going to gonna be all right all right oh watch it see God's already doing it The manager that was on shift came over to me, Janice, and he said, what is it that you're waiting on? I said, well, sir, thank you for asking, but I heard in your inventory you don't have any more. I said, I'm waiting on that 70-inch special from last night. He said, now, sir, I wasn't going to tell you. But employees don't have the right to purchase those things until the sale is over. He said, but I had one on layaway with my name on. And to keep the integrity of my job, if a customer wants it, they have priority. I want you, my Lord. I want you to grab someone's hand and tell them beginning this very moment. Y'all better preach like you're Shabaki. And I said, tell them, considering this very moment, you and I have just become God's priority. Whatever he's been holding for somebody else, he's about to give it to me. And I'm telling the law, whatever you want me to have, here I am, Lord. The Lord didn't just give me the TV. The man called a free delivering service and said, take it to his house. I'm telling you, screamers, it'll be home about time you get there. Lay, lay, lay in the midnight hour. God, help me preach. God, God, 
He's going to turn it around. Shake somebody and tell them this time. It's going to work in your favor. Tell them if you believe the word of God. You've got a receipt. That is above all receipts. And you've got the right to tell God. If you did it for Abraham. Do it for me. If you did it for Isaac. Do it for me. If you did it for Jacob. Do it for me. Did it for the 12 tribes. Do it for me. You did it for Daniel. In the lion's den. Do it for me. Did it for the Hebrew boy. In the fiery furnace. Do it for me. You did it for Paul and Silas. While they were locked in jail. Do it for me. Y'all better shake somebody. Like you want to be blessed. And tell your neighbor if God. Did it for everyone else. Why not. Do it for me. Let's preach the song. Give me some house out there. Let's preach the song. And grab a neighbor. And say neighbor. If you ever. Preach with me before. Preach these words. Lord. Do it. Lord. Do it for me. Lord. Need you to do it. Do it for me. Right now. Right now. I need you to do it. Right now. Shake a neighbor to the right. Shake a neighbor to the left. And say neighbor. Whatever you need. God's doing it now. Say I hate to be nosy. I heard a lot of dirt on you. Tell your neighbor. You heard the dirt. But let me show you the dirt. This ain't from what somebody said. I climbed out of something. That I should have stayed in. But I heard the Lord say, come out of there. Shake a neighbor and tell your neighbor, come out of there. Come out with the dirt on you. And then tell your neighbor where there was dirt. There's now water. I'm about to wash all this mess off me. I'm going to be baptized. In the name of the Lord, tell the devil, run and tell that. I made it over. Will y'all tell three people, I made it over. Ah, ah, Lord. Look at somebody say, are you with me? Tell them I'm going to find out. Tell them there's a worldly song. I don't know all the words. My bishop don't know any of them. Except the few we're about to tell you. Say neighbor. With all I heard about you. A little bit of it. Might be true. But I've been assigned to you. To dust that dirt. Right off your shoulder. I didn't come with a mic to kill you. I came with a shovel to dig you out of there. Yes, I can dig it. Yes, I can take it. Yes, I will survive. Shake a neighbor and tell your neighbor I will survive. Why don't you tell him like you mean it and tell him I, I, I Grab somebody else here and be careful who you touch and say, neighbor, do you watch TV at all? Have you ever watched commercials? Tell them there was a commercial 
that had clothes that was all soiled and dirty. Guess what? They said these words. You tried scrubbing it out. You tried washing it out. But today you got to shout it out. And when life's trouble come your way, hold your head up high and say, judge you. I'm going to praise God for you. Because tell him all the dirt that I may have heard about you. All the dirt that I might know about you does not offend me at all. Because tell him at the end of the day you read the Bible. You forgot what you read. If anybody has dirt on them they have what they need for God to create them in his own image. God picked up dirt. And I don't care how bad your life has been. God is about to pick you up. If you drop a piece of candy and you love that candy, you will look around, wait till the close is clear. Pick up that piece of candy and kiss it up to God. I'm telling five of y'all, kiss your past up to God and let the devil know I'm not ashamed of anything I've come through. Been through the fire, been through the rain, been through the flood. But clap your hands and say, I made it. If I got a hundred people that believes that by the end of August, God's going to give you a miracle. I want you to find somebody that looks happy tonight and say, oh, neighbor, ah, neighbor, the God we serve, he will bring us out. Uh, but until then, I'm not going to wait. Till the battle is over I, 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 I'm gonna shout uh, Shout uh, Shout Shout now uh, Say yeah
I'm gonna stop. I'm sorry. I'm wasting. I'm wasting all my shovel. Brother Gums, they threw a goat in a pit. Eight feet deep. They were expecting the goat to die. The goat fractured its limb. So the goat could not climb out of the hole. When the goat was down in the hole for a certain amount of time, they decided to give that goat a funeral. They called a few men from across town and they gave these men shovels. Each of them took their turn at throwing the dirt in the hole so that they could eulogize or funeralize the goat. First and second, third and fourth scoop of dirt. The goat, because of his nature, shook it off. Oh, y'all. And then the goat would then pat it under its feet. They threw more dirt and more dirt and more dirt, more dirt on the goat, but the goat, y'all better kept on shaking it off. Y'all ain't talking, you trying to make me kick. About time, 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 about time they threw enough dirt on the goat. The goat was climbing out of the hole because the goat could have accepted it and let it kill it but instead it used the dirt to climb up out of the hole I'm telling some of y'all that ain't gonna believe me that after August I want you to go get what's yours and I ain't the only one telling you the goat told me to tell you because if you spell goat when they tell the goat you can't have nothing he say nah he refuses to agree with what's said and number two it's time for you to go get it because the way you spell goat is go at y'all ain't and i'm tell some of y'all after 12 midnight go at tell your neighbor go get it come on help me breathe. go get it See if they feel say go 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 Can you grab one more person's hand and say neighbor? Come on, get your neighbor. Tell them I've got six words for you. If you're really going to go get it. God told me to tell you. And it shall come to pass. Tell them whatever you need. Whatever you pray for. It shall come to pass if you believe it say yes say yes say yes I'm about to see up I'm done hallelujah I hear the Mashandi I hear the Lord so clearly. 
It's pristine. It's nothing deep. The Lord said, my son, don't force them all to praise me. But tell them that actually believe that they are my priority. And that by the end of the month, I'm going to shuffle some things and give them their own elevator. Tell them dance and praise me right where they are. And give me... watching my social media I want this praise to be different I want this to be I should have died where they put me I barely made it out of it and now God's about to take me higher than I've ever been your praise must match your faith if you got faith to believe God's about to do it for you let your faith and your feet have a party you got one minute for giving you a dance and you enjoy ministering to him in that dance God said when you dance I'm gonna put some sprinkles on your ice cream I'm gonna put some gravy on your mashed potato you got 30 seconds to give God a return
go my baby Praise him baby Praise him baby no sound of music where does your praise come from do you have a mouth from the mouth your heart speaks out of the abundance of words my heart speaks hallelujah Stand be for us when we call on that great oh Jesus, hiya, Jesus, oh precious Jesus. Speak this. We have the One time victory is mine. Speak it. Victory is mine. Speak when victory today is mine. Who did you tell that to? I told Satan. Where did you tell him? To get thee behind. What's yours? Victory today. Oh, 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 tell me who can stand me for us when we all What do we?
How he delivers. Praise the Lord. He delivers by his word. I was bound by the powers of the devil. But he delivered. Praise the Lord. He delivered. Praise the Lord. He delivered by his word. I was bound by the power of Satan, but he delivered. Praise. We're closing, but your mouth should be working. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures. Here be Lord. Praise him above. Ye heavenly host. Praise Father. devil is a liar. I feel led to open the doors, but y'all keep worshiping. I got to do it different. Throw out the lifeline. Throw out the lifeline. Someone is drifting away. Throw out the lifeline. Throw out the lifeline. Someone is sinking today. While we're in this anointing climate anyone that doesn't have a home church you're looking for one you want to join one where your soul will be fed we're not perfect but we're full of purpose I want you to take the biggest step of your soul's journey and walk out of that seat and come to the front of this podium and let us become your extended uh oh I don't hear them extended family I'm waiting. You're talking about I'm still praying about a church. You don't have time to keep praying for no church. When you're homeless, you don't pray for a house, you move. And you get a house until you have the money to be particular. You don't have time to be particular. So I'm going to do it one more time for the two people that I know God's speaking to. Throw out the lifeline. I'm throwing it out. Throw out the lifeline. Someone is drifting away. Oh, throw out higher the lifeline. Throw out the lifeline. Someone is sinking today. It's a joyous day. That boy's got some power. Are you in school? 
Now, what class or what grade or what type of school? You finish junior high, high school, college? You're in 11th grade? Did you ever run track? Have you played sports? I see sports about to be big, but you got to get your passion back. And this is only going to help you get in school for free. You don't have to play all your life. But God said, tell her, I'm about to show her who she is. I feel one more throw out the lifeline. Last time, throw out the lifeline. Someone is drifting. Someone is drifting away. Come on, sing it. Throw out. Whoa, throw out. Someone is sinking. Yep, there it is. That's the oil. One more time, ladies, help me. Throw out! Throw out! Come on, ladies. Someone is drifting away. Because someone is sinking today. That's when we need old mothers like we used to have when stuff like this start happening. Look at me, all of you. I will do this at another time. I will ask you your name. That's my formality. I will then introduce myself to you, but you will hear about me the second Sunday in September. You will get to ask the questions that's on your heart about anything concerning church or me. I will not be afraid to answer you in a truthful manner, but you have chose the right church. I want you all to know that. Every right church don't have the right people. So you're in the right church, probably sitting next to some bad people. But let what's good in you rub off on them. Don't let what's in them rub off on you. Be the goat that used the dirt effectively. Come out, shake it off, keep moving. Now, I do have one request. If any of my members, I don't care who they are, should call you, prophesy to you, try to lay hands on you, and they didn't talk to me, tell me who did it. Before you leave this church, snitch on who made you leave and give me a chance to decide whether you go or they go. Because we are trying to raise a healthy church in an unhealthy day, in an unhealthy world. You did well. I know that two of you will be prophets. I know one of you will help me in the men's ministry. I know one of you used to be a licensed evangelist. That's by me standing here alone. I know one of you was not raised with a father. The other one has a little record that God will expunge. I know quite a bit just from you standing up here. But I'm here to tell you, as your pastor, everything will be all right. Can I get a witness? Where do you live? Orlando. So you live in Orlando? Yeah. Good. He, uh, he, he doesn't need a mic. I will do my best in the near future to help groom you for your ministry. I know you have one. I know you've been hurt by somebody, but God's going to heal you in this ministry and someone with a loud mouth ought to help give God glory for these souls. You will not be the only Jamaican here. Look to your right. Look in the second seat. Look at the mother in the second seat. You got family here. We got some Haitians here, some Boricuas. We got all kinds, El Mexicanos. We got everything up in here, including Jesus Christ. So, second, oops, second Sunday of September, we'll meet and greet. But for now, face your new brothers and sisters and give me as many as can. Come quickly and come love on them. Show us. Show them how we do this. 
Y'all can clap better than that so we can show them we're growing now. Watch and see. We're growing in Jesus. It's a little jazzy. Give me a F, F sharp. That's it. Go to D flat, mama. Y'all hug quick now because we got to go. He keeps doing great things for me da, 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 da. he keeps on doing great things for me take it from the top he keeps right on doing great things for me If I had 10,000 tongues, if I had 10,000 tongues, I'll praise him, I'll praise him, make it as a praise him with everyone, praise him with everyone. If I had 10,000 hands, come on. I'll use him just to live his name. I'll use him. Come on, Elder Curry, take it from the top. Keep right on. Doing great things for me. Y'all, thank y'all for showing them all this love. Thank you. All right, all right. Put your hands together a little softly, everybody. Clap your hands. Go somewhere nice and eat. Don't be stressed today. Everyone standing as we're completing our love. Who are these new members following? Okay. After they finish hugging, y'all can keep staying there. <laughs> Thank all of you for showing so much love today. Members look to my right. Tracy, wave. Follow her. 
and let her get your name and number and get you prepared for what's going on. Can we clap for our extended family? Come on, Shabak. Let's clap for our extended family. Everyone standing, I'm going to ask you to do something on today, something simple too, between generations. Anyone that's 30 years old and down, I want you to sow $20 today. Everyone that's 30, 31 and up, I want you to sow 40. I know this is when you wish you were 20. But the older people need a bigger financial miracle so we can take care of some of the needs of our homes and our children. And I'm telling you, look at me softly. We are in a move of God that we are nervous about because we don't see the end. But at the end, there's victory. Amen. We overlook someone that's not on our list. But on yesterday was Lamont Sheely's birthday. And we should, I don't hear nobody. And he's been a member of this church since he was 14. Huh? I said, how old was he? 15. Got married here, went off to manage a chain of McDonald's. Some kind of way found his way back, and we're glad to have him. Was our first musician, first praise leader, first, first everything. Doing it the best way he could. Kept doing it. Church kept growing under the fine leadership of Dr. Mixon. Give her a great hand as well. And now we're here. Look at somebody and tell them we are all better together. 